the symposium of going in the <coughs> very right order, I would say, because after the cleansing, we have to know what we fill up ourselves with. And uh, oh, we read from the Bible, Ephesians 5, 18. I'll quote it from, uh, it says, uh, I read the, the whole uh, of verse. And be not drunk uh, with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Actually, the, the last part, be filled with the Spirit, is going to be the topic of my little speech today. And uh, we're going to talk about, about the Spirit, uh, the, the Holy Spirit, because uh, we as uh, followers of Christ should be filled with, with His Spirit. And... Uh, it's a very cloudy understanding about this in Christianity today, because when it's when we're talking about spirit, uh, it's uh, people uh, mostly thinking about uh, as of today about miracle, uh, about voices, about vision, and there's uh, one uh, little story uh, that Brother Johnson even wrote in his uh, volume about the Methodist farmer from Nebraska. Uh, he saw in his field the, the sign of three letters, which were G, P, and C. So he understood it for himself, that's the sign from the God, and turned around, went to his bishop, and told him that I got a message from God in this three letter, as he inter interpreted it, uh, G, P, and C, it's a go preach Christ. But... Uh, Bishop looked at him, and he knew probably him personally, and uh, know his, knew his unfitness for the mission. He said, no, it doesn't mean that. It means, go plow corn. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a, not, not a single story. There is a, multiple stories like that, and that's uh, what it's all about. And uh, we today, we're going to look uh, from the Bible story, uh, standpoint what it says on this subject because it's very important the message of this scripture is that uh, the lord's people may have a greater or less degree or fullness of his spirit to be his they must have some of his spirit and in roman chapter 8 verse 9 says if any man have not the spirit of christ is not of his. It rests with ourselves largely with our use of the means which God has provided. How fully we may be filled with his spirit and disposition, his influence, the spirit of influence of his truth, which he has revealed for the very purpose of sanctifying our hearts and lives and separating us from those who have the spirit of the world. As I just quoted from uh, Romans 8, verse 9, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is not of his. It means we as a Christian should be filled with the same spirit that Christ was, if we walk in his steps. The same spirit the Apostle got in the day of Pentecost, which is written in Acts 2, verse 4. Only the Holy Spirit in the sense of a holy disposition, not as new creatures. The expression, be filled with the Spirit, reject the theory of the Holy Spirit as a person. When the correct uh, thought of the divine power and influence is understood, the Apostle's exhortation is totally reasonable. We should continue seeking to be filled with the holy mind or disposition of our God, so beautifully illustrated in the person and obedience of our dear Redeemer, His only begotten Son. So we should not observe the Holy Spirit as a person. We should observe it as a God's power, as a God's disposition in himself, as his disposition in Christ, his disposition in saints, 
his disposition in the great company as his disposition in the worthies and in the end his disposition in restitution list. There is actually seven features of it, of a divinely complete number. The contrast that we find in the words of uh, 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, God had not given us the spirit of the fear, but the power of love and of sound mind is very helpful to a proper understanding of what the Bible means by the Holy Spirit. This passage, by the term spirit of fear, certainly does not mean a spirit being that is timid, but a timid disposition. Hence the text constructing a timid disposition with the spirit of the power, love, and sound mind, certainly does not mean a spirit being that is strongly loving and wise, for the word spirit is read from the first clause into the second, and therefore has the same sense in both clauses. Hence, by the expression spirit of power, of love, and the sound mind, the apostles mean a strong, loving, and wise disposition. Therefore, according to his, this passage, the Holy Spirit is not a holy person, but a holy disposition. God has given the spirit of the sound mind to the whole church from head to feet in the Holy Spirit, a strong, loving, and wise disposition. And in, in this gift, God has bestowed upon it the main, yeah, the main the, uh, dominating graces of the Holy Spirit. This gift consists of the same four graces as are God's main and dominating attributes of character, the wisdom, power, justice, and love. For by the term uh, a sound mind in 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, wisdom is meant. And by the term love, here undoubtedly what we originally uh, called justice, a duty love. And love, charity, or disinterested love are meant. And of course, here power is expressly called by that name. God's people are to have the spirit of a sound mind in secular and religious matters. On account of the fact that not many wise, mighty, and noble are called, God's people as such at the outstart of their, their careers, in most cases, lack the spirit of a sound mind in both secular and religious matters. This primarily due as to the secular matter to their not being worldly wise. Their inability in this respect is increased by the lack of the great mental, artistic, moral, and religious capacity in most of them, not many mighty, and this in turn is increased by most of them having been born ignoble and more or less trained in ignobility before the Lord's dealing with them began. No natural man has the spirit of the sound mind in religious matters, either Godward or manward. Therefore, in 2 Timothy 1, verses 5 and 6, teaches us it comes gradually to us from him in both secular and religious matters, so that later on we attain an, a considerable degree of secular and religious wisdom. It is in vain that we seek to be filled with the Holy Spirit if we do not give attention to the divine arrangement provided for this very purpose, if we neglect the word of God, we are neglecting the sanctifying power of it. If we neglect prayer, we are neglecting another privilege and help, uh, helpfulness which it brings. And if we neglect uh, to assemble ourselves with those who are 
the Lord's people and in whom we see the seal of this spirit, we will fail to get the benefit and helps which every joint supplied, including the helps which God has promised to the church as a whole through various members which he sets in the body for the exposition of his word and the obtaining therefrom of its sanctifying power or spirit. Having been attaining the fullness of the spirit to some degree, we cannot stop and be satisfied because our moral bodies like a leaky vessels, cracked, mailed, with God permit to be filled with His Holy Spirit. The Apostle's suggestion is that in view of what we know of our own imperfections and our liability to let slip from us the Holy Influence, inspired of God through the Gospel, we should give the more earnest, earnest heed lest we should let these things slip from us. Because we, we have treasure, the Holy Spirit, the renewed mind in harmony with God, in earthen vessels. It's in uh, Hebrew 2, 2, verse 1, and 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7. It behooves all who would walk in the footsteps of our Master, who would share in the suffering of Christ, and in the glory that shall follow, to seek in the Lord's way, to be filled with His Spirit. To this end, we need to keep close to the Lord and to the fellow members of His body, close in sympathy, in love, in cooperation. And we need also keep close to the Word, which, in the, which is the fountain of the sanctifying influence to the entire church, sanctifying them through Thy truth. Thy word is truth. And I just wanted to add to this. And isn't it beautiful opportunity for, for us having this uh, convention up here through the discourses, through just simple communication with each other and through spiritual songs. Let's, during all these three days, fill up ourselves with this God's spirit. Thank you.